Louise, what are the most common problems for older babies in their sleep? The biggest problem that parents have with their baby's sleep as the baby gets older is that the baby's still not sleeping through the night. And parents have an idea that a newborn will wake lots of times, but by the time baby gets to four, six or 12 months old, parents are pretty shattered from waking up lots of times in the night. Yeah. So it's that you know, six million dollar question of when is my baby going to sleep through the night? Which I yeah. imagine is so different for every baby. It is. It varies hugely and there's no, you know, magic bullet and there's no, you know, time where you can say that your baby will definitely be sleeping through. Sure, of course. Yeah, so often we talk to parents who make some small changes to their baby's sleep and by 10 weeks old they're doing a really good, you know, eight or ten hour stretch mm -hmm. and then we have lots of parents who contact us who have 12 month old babies that are still up six times wow. a night. But a good rule of thumb is by three or four months old, most babies can go from a 10 o'clock feed through till six in the morning without needing anything during the night. Okay, yeah. and I imagine it's so different for each child. They all have their own ideas. <laughs> I like to say to people that the baby didn't read the same book as the mum, because <laughs> yeah, exactly. mums these days are so prepared and that they've read lots of books and they think they can solve exactly. everything from, from reading on the internet or from a book. The age that a baby will sleep through the night differs enormously. Um, there's some things that you can do, there's a lot of things you can do that will encourage the baby to sleep through the night and usually these come down to changes that the parents can make. Okay. Um, by about three or four months most babies can physiologically can go through the night from a feed at about 10 o'clock through till morning Great. Um, and that's when parents make some changes and use some other settling techniques other than feeds and so on. Okay. Um, babies sort of left to their own devices of when they're going to choose to sleep through the night. Some babies will naturally start sleeping a really big stretch by eight or ten weeks. Um, other babies if they like to feed to get to sleep or they're patted or rocked to get to sleep, those babies generally by nine or twelve months will still be needing that help to sleep. Right. Yeah. So what then is the main cause of night waking for babies? So at about five months of age, baby's sleep changes quite significantly. They go from sort of drifting in and out of light and deep sleep cycles to actually waking up every two hours. So for babies over five months, they will never sleep through the night for like a 12 hour block. They sleep in two hour cycles and then wake up fully between each cycle. Right. So the main issue with babies who wake up frequently is not that they're waking, it's that they don't know how to get back to sleep without help. So, so it's called, the whole issue of self-settling becomes incredibly important. If you want your baby to sleep 8 or 10 or the magical 12 hours a night, your baby has to be able to first fall asleep at bedtime without any help and then every two hours when they wake they need to be able to get themselves back to sleep. Okay. Yeah, so until a baby has that magical skill of being able to self-settle, they will continue to wake up, maybe not four to six times, but you know, some of those wakings they will need help to get back to sleep. Right. Yeah. So I guess then it's really important that a baby can self-settle. It's incredibly important, yeah. and. Not, some babies will learn that skill naturally, but for most babies it is a skill that they need to learn. They need parents to ease off helping the baby to sleep and actually encourage the baby to fall asleep without help. Okay, mm. so what should parents do then if their baby can only fall asleep with some help? Well the first thing parents need to do is work out what it is that they're doing that baby's relying on. What right. help are the parents providing that the baby can't fall asleep without? And that's often for parents, that's the trick, that's what they struggle with. Okay. Um, they might have an inkling that what they're doing is wrong mm -hmm. <laughs> or creating a bad habit. Sure. Um, somebody may have said to them, you really shouldn't be feeding your baby to sleep, that's causing the problem. Mm. or they might not have a clue. Sometimes parents are so exhausted that they're just in a cycle of the baby wakes up, they get up, they feed them, they do this, that and the other to help the baby get back to sleep. Mm. And it, it can take somebody else saying, actually you need to stop doing that. 
So what I'd encourage parents to do is to be quite systematic and sit down and actually think about what do they do to get their baby to go to sleep. Okay. We call that identifying the sleep association. Right. So what does the baby associate with going from awake to falling asleep? And then once parents know or have identified what those issues are, then they can actually decide on a plan to wean their baby off needing okay. that help. Right. Yeah. So one of the commonest ones is feeding your baby to get to sleep. Because <laughs> when babies, yes, feeding to sleep is very, very common with a newborn. Often they're awake for such a short period of time and mums are learning to feed and the whole thing takes yeah. pretty much the entire hour a newborn is yeah. up for. So babies will often fall asleep when they're tiny. Um, and over time, parents can become incredibly reliant on that's how they get their baby to sleep. Sure. So if a baby can only get to sleep by feeding, then when they wake up two hours later and two hours later and two hours later, parents will feel that the only way that baby can get back to sleep is by feeding. Yes. And it's not the milk that the baby relies on, it's the sucking and the whole cuddle right. and the, the whole nurturing. mum, exactly, yeah. mum coming in and solving it for them and mm -hmm. getting them back to sleep. Yeah. So that's one of the most common ways that um, parents help baby to fall asleep at bedtime and then help them back to sleep during the night and baby never actually has what we call the opportunity to self-settle because yes. they're constantly given that help. Okay. Yeah, so in that situation mum and dad need to recognise that the feeding is what's causing the baby to not be able to self-settle right. rather than the baby only can get to sleep with that help. Okay. Yeah. So what are some other things that parents might be doing that are quite unhelpful to get their babies to go to sleep? Mm, good question. Another really common thing is using movement or patting to yes. get baby off to sleep. And again, this often stems from newborn babies who have spent nine months in such a lovely, snuggly, warm, nurturing environment where mummy was often stroking her tummy or patting, and that's a really good way to get newborns to sleep, particularly grizzly, colicky babies. They need lots of that kind of jiggling and patting. But an older baby who's over, say, four or five months, if babies still need that at that age, then like with the feeding to sleep, they'll need it at bedtime, and then, you know, baby will wake up two or four hours later and mum and dad will rush in and they'll be giving lots of jiggling and patting yes. and baby relies on that to get to sleep okay. so that's a really crucial one that if you know that your baby needs that at bedtime um, and they wake in the night dealing with it at bedtime and teaching your baby to fall asleep without any patting or jiggling or sure. um, walking around often parents will walk around at bedtime with baby up on them and they'll be mm. doing this kind of thing to get them off to sleep yes. and then they'll be like going and trying to put them into bed without waking them if you're doing that then that's the the behavior to change okay. at bedtime is most important because that's when baby goes from wide awake to asleep sure. and learns about actually falling asleep okay mm. and if we are in these habits of helping our babies get off to sleep. Mm. How long would it take, do you think, to break a habit like that for the baby to get you know, used to falling asleep on their own? Yeah. Um, three days is a really good rule of thumb to change any behaviour with children, okay. with babies. And also it's the mum and dad too. Because usually it's the mum and dad that are in the habit as well because they yes. believe that the only way they can get their baby to fall asleep is by doing X, Y or Z behaviour. So like feeding to sleep. Baby can only get to sleep by being fed until they're asleep and then transfer them into right. bed. And so if parents commit to making a change that they're going to stop using that, it will take it may take three days before the baby is, you know, happy hopping into bed and going to sleep without the feeding. Okay. But parents need to commit to at least three days right. to actually see the change. Okay. Trying something new for a day won't work. No. It would be a miraculous change if right. a baby instantly sleeping through after one day. But after three days, you should see a really major change. Okay. And, um, if you're using a sort of structured sleep training plan where you stop doing something like feeding or rocking to sleep and you use a different technique designed to teach a baby to self-settle, by three days most babies are almost sleeping through the night. Right. Wow. Yeah. And sometimes when you have a newborn, three days, 
you know, can seem like a real struggle because you're really mm. tired and after yes. a day you just want to quit. But yes. really, you know, trying it for that three days is, is important. It is. And it's important to choose a sleep training technique that you're really comfortable with. There's lots of different techniques you can use. Some people are really not comfortable with letting their baby cry even mm. for short periods of time. They might find that really stressful and might believe that it's, you know, not good for their sure. baby. So there's lots of techniques you can use where you, rather than sort of go cold turkey with something like feeding to sleep, you might, gen you know, gradually wean your baby off that over, you know, maybe not three days, maybe a couple of weeks okay. if you want to try really little tiny baby steps to make that change. Yes. But yes, if you're really exhausted, even working out what the problem is is hard and committing to the plan is usually the biggest step. Right. Once parents have actually decided, yes, they need to teach their baby to self-settle and this is the plan they're going to follow, they're really halfway there okay. because deciding what to do is crucial. Right. So what about babies then who get really drowsy from having a feed right before bedtime? Mm. That definitely can cause waking in the night because if the baby relies on the feeding to get drowsy enough to fall asleep, it's pretty much the same thing as if they fall asleep while they're still having the feed. Sure. Yeah, so a good rule of thumb is to leave five or 10 minutes of awake time at the end of the bedtime feed. So aim to finish your, your last feed at about 10 to seven, okay. and then um, have some, something else in between then cuddles or bedtime stories sitting on mum or dad's knee, just something to break up the end of the feed before baby hops into bed so baby gets into bed wide awake and is not reliant on that milk feed to get drowsy okay. yeah that will really help often just changing that five or ten minutes of awake time will be enough to encourage baby to fall asleep by themselves Great. yeah so let's talk about dummies then helpful or problematic I'm quite a big fan of dummies myself. Okay. I've used dummies with all my four babies and I find them really helpful self-settling tool. But you need to think about dummies in the context of a baby being able to self-settle. Okay. So if at bedtime baby falls asleep with a dummy in their mouth, they will associate that really strongly with falling asleep. Babies who take a dummy generally love them and come to rely on them really heavily. Mm -hmm. So the key for mum and dad is to stop putting the dummy in for baby. Okay. So baby needs to learn, as part of learning to self-settle, baby needs to be able to get the dummy, pop it in for themselves. Right. And once a baby can do that, they have the skills to sleep you know, all night from bedtime through till morning because each two hours when they wake, they just go plug <laughs> and go back to sleep. Okay. But if mum and dad carry on being the one who goes in and gets down under the bed or <laughs> grovels around in the dark and finds it and puts it back in for the baby, then baby will think that's how they get back to sleep okay. by mum and dad coming and doing that for them. Mm -hmm. So good, um, good idea with dummies is to use a really subtle night light so baby can find a dummy in the night. If it's dark and they're pretty uncoordinated, it's really tricky. Yes. So I would say put five or six dummies in the cot. Put them where your baby's hands naturally lie when they're asleep. So for some babies, their hands are up here, so you want the dummies all sprinkled around by the head. Or if your baby sleeps with their arms down by their sides, then you put the dummies down there. So they can easily just reach out, half asleep, find one, pop it back in right. and that will make a huge difference. Okay. Um, the other thing that can help is giving the baby the dummy during the day to play with. People often have this um, you know, belief that the baby will be get more reliant on the dummy if they're allowed it during the day. But I have the quite opposite view that if you want a baby to be coordinated enough to find it, some dummies you have to twist it around so it's you know up the right way. They actually need to be really confident handling it. Sure. So if they're lying on the floor or sitting in their um, bouncer net, something like that, just give them a dummy and let them kind of get the hang of jiggling it round and encourage them to learn to put it in for themselves. Okay. Pop it in their hand and guide their hand up to their mouth rather other than always popping it in for them. Right. Yeah, and so from about five months old, babies can learn that skill for wow. themselves. So should parents avoid such things as comforters like sleep aids? I think that sleep aids that the baby can use for themselves are really, really valuable. So when we're looking at self-settling, we want our parents to wean off any behaviours that require mum and dad to help. So that's why with dummies, the baby needs to be able to put put the dummy in for themselves, feeding to sleep and so on. It's not helpful because that requires mum and dad. But yeah. a comforter, 
a baby can use as a tool to get themselves off to sleep at bedtime and it's easy for them to find and it's easy for them to use it to get back to sleep during the night. Okay. So for parents that are looking at using some sleep training or trying to encourage their baby to self-settle, a comforter can be really, really helpful. Okay. The things to look for, I've just got one here to show you. This is, um, this is a kuski and this is breathable fabric. So if, if you're using a comforter in bed with your baby, it's really important that it's breathable fabric. Fabric yes. because babies naturally will want to they will want to suck on it um, they might want to rub it up by their face some babies with these um, they actually like to have them like up on their <laughs> face like this yeah. and so you want to be really confident that it's breathable and it's really really safe for baby to use yes. um, a good trick if you're introducing a comforter is to pop it down your top for a few hours so it absorbs mummy's scent oh, okay. because then babies will naturally be drawn to it you don't have to keep doing that, you know, just once or twice to get them attached to it. Right. And also you might want to put it in between you and your baby when you're feeding them. So they start, um, they can start to, to cuddle it and they'll associate it with you. They'll associate it with that nice warm sort of cuddly milk feeling. Okay. Um, and then you just start tucking it into bed with them every time they have a sleep. Great. And then they start to use that to cuddle rather than needing you to be the cuddle mm. at bedtime. That's, a, yeah. that's such a great tip because I could never get hired to take a toy or a comforter or yeah. anything that she associated with sleep because yes. I'd just be like isn't this toy lovely? Yeah. Here you Have go. this one. Yeah, yes. so those are some really good ideas. Yeah, okay. and there's there's a lot of comforters that are specifically designed for that purpose. Other ones that are really um, useful are ones, babies love tags, yes. so a, a little tag blanket that just has a line of tags. Some babies are just so drawn to that they'll fall asleep just doing that tootling with the tags. Okay. Yeah. Toolbox Parenting Groups are a fresh approach to parent education. They are informal, relaxed and friendly. You get equipped with practical skills and strategies that can immediately be put to use. You get key parenting principles and you also get a lot of encouragement in your parenting. Find a Toolbox Parenting Group in your area in the Event Finder calendar.